Well, I'm Richard Taylor and I'm here at Cheston Community College for a public stakeholders briefing on the Milton Road plans. I think this is the first time that the Greater Cambridge Partnership or the Greater Cambridge City Deal Organisation has held a meeting that it's calling um, a stakeholder meeting in public. So it'll be interesting to see what that is. There's no right to film this evening's meeting. Um, I have asked about um, being able to film and report it. I've suggested that it's, it's made a public meeting, a bit like any other local council meeting. There seem to be um, some murmurs in support of that from um, the chair of the local liaison forum, but we're yet to see um, exactly what's going to go on here this evening. I have actually um, got a ticket to tonight's event. It's something unusual, um, but I, it, it was a, um, an event where tickets were apparently optional, and um, it, well, it wasn't really clear. But anyway, I have signed up for a ticket, and if necessary, I can, uh, can show my ticket. That's interesting, there's someone here in fire service uniform, so we might have actually got some of the stakeholders who we haven't heard from before um, here at this evening's meeting. Um, hello, I'd like to welcome everybody here this evening. There are some apologies from councillors Peter Saris and councillor Claire Richards who couldn't be here due to their work commitments. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody here, particularly to the members of the local liaison forum who put in enormous amount of work up to this point and we trust in the future, and particularly to the residents' associations who I know have been meeting on the report and formulating their specific response to the report. And then to all those who attended local liaison forum meetings and the <coughs> workshops that were run, that were run on particular aspects of Milton Road and the concepts, the proposals, the ideas and so forth. We have had a huge number of wins. If people think that Union Lane was proposed to be closed, it's not. The uh, roundabout at Highworth Avenue, first of all, there was proposed that the Highworth Avenue would be closed. It won't be. Secondly, the roundabout was to go. The roundabout will stay. Um, and so there are other aspects of the resolutions that I think we should be seeing as huge wins that have come from the local liaison forum, from the residents' associations, and from all of you as, as residents. The, our resolutions are contained in the report of the officers, which is going to the assembly, and you can find that on the website, and it actually is quite easy to find on the website, cross fingers, I do think now, but if anyone has any trouble, email me and I will send you the link. Excuse me, who are you please? I beg your pardon, I'm so sorry. I'm Jocelyn Scott, I'm the Chair of the Local Liaison Forum and County Councillor for Arbor. Thank you for reminding me, I appreciate that. And um, if you email me, I'll send you the link. Now when you go through our resolutions, they're in a table in the report, the resolution is there with the preamble, and at the right hand side is the officer's comment on that. I do emphasise that our do optimum which is the first resolution of the local liaison forum that it should be taken into account, has been taken into account. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And we need to recognise that as a win. Sometimes, as residents, as participants, we do win and we have to recognise that. Now, when this concept is put forward, I do hope that everybody will allow the officers to put it forward in the way that they prefer to put it forward. If they prefer to take questions during the course of putting it forward, that's fine. If they want them at the end, I do hope that everybody will respect that because I, for one, do want to see what is up here on the screen and know precisely what it is that the officers are proposing. So then we will know when we go to the assembly and later to the board precisely what we want to disagree or agree with, whichever the case is. And it makes it easier if we can hear their presentation in the way that they want to do it. So again, I just thank everybody for coming and then I thank the officers for the work they've done too. I should intercede to say there have been meetings between the Residents Association and the officers. One meeting went on for five hours. And I think that shows a commitment from the Residents Association representatives and a commitment from the officers to endeavour to work together so that we can come up with something that we really 
can appreciate and value in Milton Road, which is the heart of our respective uh, divisions, that is King's Hedges, Chesterton, West Chesterton and East Chesterton, Arbury and now part of Castle. So thank you. And thanks to the officers. Thanks, That was a good five hour meeting. I was important. <laughs> Hi, thanks for coming everybody. Uh, my name is Paul van der Bolk and I'm the project manager for the Milton Road scheme and for the Histon Road scheme as well. So uh, we'll move on to the Histon Road scheme later on in the summer. First, tonight we're going to concentrate on Milton Road. So in terms of the presentation, first what I want to do is just to quickly clarify the project objectives. I know that every time we meet, we seem to remind everybody of, of these objectives, but basically they form the core of what we are trying to, to deliver. And we've been set these objectives by the uh, Great GCP, Great Cambridge Partnership Board. Uh, for those who don't know, the City Deal has recently been rebranded. It's now Great Cambridge Partnership, which is GCP for short. Uh, so anyway, we are working with those project objectives to the best uh, that we can, to, and uh, obviously we have to take all of them into account. Secondly, just quickly to overview of the local in engagement and just to reaffirm what Jocelyn has, has just reminded everybody about the important LLF engagement that we've held over the past couple of years. Uh, well, the past year, sorry. I want to then move on to give a good description of, of the final concept design. And just to remind everybody that this is still a concept, so we're putting forward a concept design towards the, uh, the, the uh, chief executive, the executive board. Once we have got approval for that concept design, then there will be a more detailed design process through the summer and the autumn, and that will include further engagement with the residents and the other level. And then finally, and this is probably the most important part of tonight, and probably the part which will take the longest, so I'll go through the presentation fairly quickly if I can. Uh, we'll be taking questions and trying to offer further explanation uh, to any questions that you might have. And the aim of that is to allow you to perhaps get a better understanding of, of any, any things that we're not clear on, so that you can put your questions to the, to the board. So, just a quick few introduction <coughs> slides. Uh, obviously, we've published a report uh, which is now available on the website, and if you haven't seen it, uh, you, can, you can obviously download it. And if you have any problems finding it, Jocelyn's already offered uh, to provide a link, but Olivia, who's the comms officer in the team, will also point you to the right direction if you ask her later tonight. So, Officers, we believe this final concept responds well to the project objectives and also it goes a lot further and it also responds to kind of further input and objectives that we've had from both the City Deal Board and through the engagement with the local, the local areas and forums and the, the uh, Residents Association and campsite as well. Uh, so this briefing aims to quickly describe and explain the final concept. So the objectives, here we go again. Comprehensive priority for buses in both directions wherever practical. And this is all about trying to put the infrastructure in place to allow buses to become a more attractive mode of transport. Uh, to try and encourage people maybe to, to kind of start using the buses a bit more often rather than sitting in their cars clogging up the roads. Safer and more convenient routes for cycling and walking, segregated where practical and possible. This is quite a challenge in some sections on Milton Road, but we think we've managed to accommodate segregated cycling on most parts of the route. We're obviously looking to enhance the environment, streetscape and air quality. I think the final concept moves a lot, more, a lot further towards actually achieving that aim. Previous concepts you may have seen didn't quite meet it. Uh, additional capacity for sustainable trips to employment education sites and obviously that includes walking, cycling, buses. I already mentioned one of the outcomes of the first uh, objective and that's increased bus patronage. 
add them to new services which have been offered and which will kind of come as we uh, find that we have a new development at Water Beach. And the final objective, and this sometimes people ask me what this means, to maintain or reduce general traffic levels. <coughs> so, City, the Greater Cambridge Partnership aim to try to reduce general traffic coming into Cambridge. This is one of their aims. However, this is against the backdrop of increased growth in the area and projections kind of forecast that there will be a 30% increase in uh, the number of journeys that are required in the area. So, against the backdrop of increasing numbers of people who are wanting to travel in the, on the roads and transport networks, rail, cycleways, pedestrians, against that backdrop, we're, we're, we're looking to maintain the capacity on the road to kind of the current level so that we don't end up with a, a huge traffic jam. A few further design requirements that came a bit later on in the process, and that was from, well, from the, from the uh, objective board, is that we're, we're looking to maintain an avenue of mature trees, the core design element, um, vision of grass, verges and planting, uh, and also looking uh, for effective wider public realm and landscaping, looking to do something outside the shops maybe if we can work with the owners of the shops to you know, start in that area up and make it work better for, for, for people using the, those facilities. Uh, we're looking, well, there's a preference for a design that avoids the need for double bus lanes on the stretch of road, and we've accommodated that within the final context. And the final point was just to remove all of the, all of the band turning movements that were previously proposed in the do something concept. So, as has been mentioned already, the local liaison forum and uh, camp cycle, and that should say the uh, residents associations, have been uh, very influential in shaping shaping the final concept design and I've had, as, as Jocelyn mentioned, I've had various meetings already in my short time as project manager for this project with, with the various uh, residents associations and with Matt from Cam Cycle who drew up the document. And, and that, those, those, those meetings have been really valuable for me in fact as project manager to help me to understand kind of some of the, the aspects that need to be taken into account on the road. So the do optimum conceptual design, as already just mentioned, that was drawn up by Matt and the Residents Association, is supported by the LLF, which is supported by the LLF. It, I think it, it forms a strong basis for our final concept design. And we have, we have worked hard to accommodate a lot of the do optimum aspects within the final concept. And finally, the resolutions, which they've been adopted unless they conflict with or compromise significantly with uh, individual project objectives. <coughs> right, very briefly, and I don't want to dwell on this too long because we've uh, talked it to death through uh, various local areas and forums. Uh, just a quick word on the modelling. <coughs> so the design of the vehicle requirement in the final concept has been aided by micro-simulation. And many of you may be aware that we also ran micro-simulation on the the do optimum proposal to basically check how, how well it worked, uh, flag up some of the issues. The, ma the, ma the main issues with, with the do optimum were the kind of some of the junction designs and the lack of bus lanes in terms of helping traffic flow. So the Microsim mod modelling has enabled us to, to actually address those uh, problems and come up with designs that help that, that flow of traffic. Uh, yeah, obviously that's the next point. So the length and the position of bus lanes has been optimised to enable the required element of bus priority while also maximising the opportunities for landscaping and tree planting. Uh, there's more work to do on this in the, in the detailed design phase, but we feel that bus lanes are important to enable them to get buses into Cambridge. So they, they do form a core element of the of the, the final concept. We're saying that we are working to obviously one, only one uh, lane of bus lane for any section of Milton Road. And finally, in terms of modelling, so provision 
provision for the pedestrian cycle movements is taken into account within the parameters modelling, although we're not specifically modelling uh, to design uh, for pedestrian <coughs> cyclists. We're just modelling to, to see how they interact at key junctions. Uh, the modelling exercise, uh, in, in essence, modelling exercise was to help us to design the vehicular route along Milton Road. It wasn't to help us design the, uh, the pedestrian and cycling. And kind of a lot, a much more important element of that design has actually come through what, from working with Cam Cycle and, and also the cycling officers within, within the Hampshire County Council infrastructure, major infrastructure team. So I'm going to go through uh, section by section. Chris, can you just close your hands? So starting from uh, Mission's corner working out, we've got six sections. Basically, the scheme is drawn, drawn up into six sections. Uh, and I'll go through section by section, highlighting the key points. And then later on, if you've got questions, I can flick back through and, and, and you can, uh, so at the end of the presentation, if you've got any questions on the, on the specific questions, I can flick back through. So, coming up from Mitchell's corner, moving outbound, I'll move outbound as I describe. Uh, we have a section of bus lane approaching Mitchell's corner. Um, also, we have some, uh, we'll have some parking still retained next to the shops. Cycling is segregated most of the way, apart from this small section here. On the outbound side of the road, we've managed to segregate the cycling uh, behind a tree buffer and a tree and landscape buffer all the way up to the junction. The issue with this junction is that it is fairly tight. Uh, it's very difficult to achieve full cycle segregation right across the, across the junction and outbound. Uh, so we've, we've resorted to using the, uh, in, in the concept stage at least, we've resorted to using the advanced stop line for cyclists. Um, uh, obviously the crossing pedestrian is slightly further up into Gilbert Road. On the inbound section there we've managed to achieve uh, segregated cycling. And import this 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 uh, small part piece of, of light gray right here is an important buffer between the, the cycling and the and the, the vehicles coming around the corner <coughs> from Gilbert Road. And we need to, we actually need to, to have a better look at that and make sure that it works safely. Because obviously you can you can possibly get some overswimming vehicles as they navigate the turn. So moving a bit further, uh, again this is the very narrow section of road. We've segregated the cycleway going outbound. Uh, on the inbound section, we have a, a bus lane approaching Gilbert Road Junction. And we have, uh, we've indicated a very small strip of landscape in between. <coughs> Sorry, we have the cycleway next to the bus rail on this section, which this is the only section where we haven't been able to segregate the cycling from the, the main traffic. Uh, compromise solution is that, that it is next to a bus lane which won't be so heavily used as, as kind of the, the main part of the road so we feel that it's a, it's a safe alternative to having no cycle lane at all or having the cycles mixed into the bus lane. And it's also fair to say that the cycle lane can be slightly height differentiated from the road uh, using a curve. The other consideration was to have the a small strip of, a very small strip of landscape in between the cycleway and the bus lane, but if we're looking at reducing the cycle lane width for this section, that would put the cycle lane next to the footpath and then you would run the risk of cyclists overtaking each other onto the footpath, which is perhaps even more unsafe than, than uh, overtaking in the bus lane. So the other, the other thing which you'll see through the length of the Milton Road is the Copenhagen <coughs> style crossings. And these are crossings where priority is given to pedestrians and cyclists who will be navigating or going across the crossings. So any vehicles coming out or coming into the crossing will have to give way to the, the cycling pedestrians. 
This is a fairly new concept in the UK. It is being adopted, I believe, in some parts of London, and Neil will probably be able to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but we're, we're looking to be a little bit progressive and include it into our concept, uh, and hopefully push it through safety work. So moving up with the section, I've got some cross sections and a few, a few of those uh, visualizations. So cross sections uh, relate to the green boxes, roughly where they are. So again, you can see two meters footway, two meters cycle away, verge, carriageway widths, and some space for parking. And I'll just gradually move through these. So the next one is on the approach to Gilbert Road. Again, maintaining a similar situation, two metres. Footway goes down to 1.8 metres here, reflecting the slightly narrower uh, road width, and also we've got hard landscaping with trees in it. And then moving past Gilbert Road Junction, here is the section where we have the cycleway next to the bus lane. You can see the road width 18.4 metres. Uh, we feel that this concept is kind of is a good is a good compromise solution to, to, to meet the project objectives and how it may look. No trees on the right-hand side. No, we understand your questions. <laughs> so yeah, the gentleman is correct. Currently there isn't an avenue of trees on this section, as I mentioned. The width of the road isn't there within this concept. And obviously those questions you need to submit to the board who will be ultimately deciding on the way that Kind of the compromises maybe that need to be made within the concept. As you have done, I know. So moving on to the next section. Uh, from Ashton Road up past the Elizabeth Way roundabout. So again, Copenhagen style crossings. Uh, we've managed to fit two-way, so from this point onwards, from Ashton Road onwards, uh, we've put two-way cycling on the outbound side of the road, so on this side of the road. And that two-way cycling will continue up over the roundabout, over Highway Avenue, up past the shops, into the next shed, into the next section, and all the way to Ramsden Square. And that, that's in direct response to sort of some of the discussions I've had with the Residents Association and the LLS, taking into account the concerns of parents who uh, send their kids out to schools. There's a lot of schools in this area, as you probably all know. Again, approaching the roundabout, a new section of bus lane here. So basically we've switched uh, the bus lane to the outbound side, uh, which makes more sense approaching this junction. Uh, again, segregation of the cycleway, and trees and landscaping fit within this section quite easily. In terms of the roundabout, um, obviously that's, that was quite a big talking point through the, through the, through the duopsman with the Dutch style roundabout proposed. This design actually, you could argue that it kind of stems out of the Dutch style roundabout. It's not, it, maybe it isn't 100% there yet in terms of final detailed design, but it demonstrates a concept of allowing segregation of the cyclists, uh, two-way cycling on the Highway Avenue junction and signalised crossings, so continuous signalised crossings that allow for easy pedestrian cycle movements. Uh, we've also kept the two lanes in, in the roundabout because that aids the traffic flow through this junction. And this, this little section, this Elizabeth Way and uh, Harvey Road junctions are kind of quite critical junctions in terms of the, the road capacity in this, on, on Milton Road. And it's where a lot of the hold-ups occur. And if we can get this flowing well, we can meet that objective of getting, you know, maintaining the, the capacity on the road. 
So we can come back to this one later if you've got questions about it. In terms of how it might look, so we've got three metre two-way cycling, that's a cycleway on the outbound side of the road, uh, your busway outbound, and then two metre cycleway on the inbound side of the road. And as a visualisation, you may have seen this one on the website. This is looking outbound towards us before we're roundabout. And then finally, just past Elizabeth Way, this cross section kind of represents that whole section as a kind of an average section in front of the shops. Uh, and you can see there's a, there's a few <coughs> different ideas for what, what can happen outside of the shops. And that relates to what I mentioned earlier in terms of we, we need to still have discussions with the shop owners uh, and the, the landowners on that, in that area to, to, to decide exactly what we can do. Again, we're looking to segregate the cycleway in front of, this, in front of the shops uh, and provide some parking bays along this section for unloading vehicles. And the parking bays on the next section, we're moving on to section three, it represents on in purple. So, for, for this section uh, near Arby Road, we've, we've worked on this uh, crossing and I think having the two-way off-road cycleway that we now have has helped us to make a decent segregation across this crossing. So on that side of the crossing, <coughs> cyclists and pedestrians will cross sort of as a continuous part of their route. Uh, we're aiming to have a, an all-green pedestrian cycling phase, which is sometimes referred to as a scramble. Um, <laughs> Apparently, there's lots of junctions in Cambridge that actually operate in this way, although not officially. Uh, the cycling team got very excited when I said, this is what we might have. But, but that should work for the cyclists. Uh, we've obviously kept the left-hand turn out of Union Lane, which we originally were thinking about. You know, the modelling showed that if we banned a left turn out of Union Lane, we may get enhanced uh, road capacity, obviously that didn't go down too well as a, as a great option. Uh, and I think we can maintain fairly good capacity through that junction for vehicles without that planned closure. So we've, we've kept, kept the left turn out in lane, but we've done a lot of enhancement on the, on the, on the cycling pedestrian crossings. And obviously you've got your trees and landscaping there, your inbound bus lane approaching uh, the junction. You might notice that we haven't included a bus lane in the section between Arby Road and Elizabeth Way. We did consider putting bus lane in there, but we felt that actually having the bus lane hinders, there isn't really enough space for bus lane in that section. Having bus lane there actually hinders the approach to Elizabeth Way roundabout for other cars. And since we have a high majority of cars turning left at the roundabout there, there's a slight difficulty in where you can place the bus lane you can put it in the middle but that's quite difficult to design. So we've actually found that by not having a bus lane in that section, we're, we're able to make a flow. And that's through having signalisation, both for Arby Road, so the, signal, the signals at Arby Road and having a new signalised roundabout at Elizabeth Way, we're able to tie the signals together somewhat to enable an enhanced traffic flow through that small section. So moving on to the next section, which is just a fairly straight section of road. We've got the, I think the biggest, uh, the Copenhagen style crossings all the way. We're maintaining the two-way cycleway, segregated on both, well, segregated on both sides, two-way on the outbound side of the road. And we're maintaining the inbound bus lane in the, in the concept here. In terms of how it may look, Moving on past Woodhead Drive, I think, I mean, Woodhead Drive at the moment, I used to cycle up and down Hilton Road years ago, quite every day, and when you get to this 
junction here, you've got a really wide road to cross. Uh, so just narrowing down the entrance to that road helps achieve a much safer crossing for both pedestrians and cyclists. We've still maintained the kind of the right turn into this road because I work up uh, Woodhead Drive. I think there's been a lot of residential development in that area. It's one of the busiest side roads, so we feel that having that that the island in the middle to allow that that right turn in there, and also Kendal Way to allow the right turn into Kendal Way helps helps the traffic flow. Uh, then moving on, moving on up towards King's Hedges, we have the outbound bus lane. So we've switched, switched the bus lane to the outbound, it makes more sense to have on that side as we approach the junction. In terms of what it looks like, again, three metres cycle away, we've got 1.7 metre verges, uh, two metres cycle away on the inbound side of the road, both segregated. Again, I think we've got even, well, we've actually, at this top section, currently in the concept, we've gone down to one-way cycling approaching to the Sergis Junction. <coughs> Conceptually, um, I mean, if there, there is perhaps space to maintain that two-way, but in terms of what we felt we should put as a concept, we've, we've gone down to one-way because we're unsure how we would uh, approach King's Hedges Junction with a two-way cycle lane. So we felt actually it's safer to, to, to maintain it like this and perhaps manage sort of the entrance onto the two-way section with the crossing. In terms of how we look, similar to the last slide, but uh, outbound bus lane and one-way cycling on both sides of the road. So King's Hedges, King's Hedges Road. So this junction design actually, to me, looks very similar to what was proposed as the second option in the Duoptimum proposal. Um, I have to say the designers did quite a good job in sort of managing to accommodate all of what's being proposed into kind of into the space. The difference uh, here is that they had to widen up the kind of the junction entrances <coughs> because of the dual optimum. Mm -hmm. uh, as we probably as we probably said before, it was drawn just a little bit too tightly for, for large vehicles to kind of make make the turn. So the junction has been widened, but the main point of the dual optimum is to allow the segregated cycle movements and pedestrian movements across each arm of the junction and with continuous crossings and again we would look to have um, all red all, sorry all green pedestrian cycle scramble as they call it across this junction and i think this i think i mean personally i think i think this design works well uh speaking with the uh, map he designed the optimum i think perhaps he, he thinks that you know this design is kind of is almost there in terms of the, in terms of the concept just a few tweaks on it maybe, and we've got a design that really works well. So, moving on past the junction, um, we've got a small amount of bus lane approaching the guided busway. That guided busway section should have been chopped off really because it's slightly different to that now with the, the buses being able to obviously cross to go down towards the station. So ignore that small section at the end. Uh, again, we've got two-way two cycle, two cycling on this side of the road. We've got the underpass, the current underpass here, which brings cyclists up. And then we're looking to have, uh, well, we, we have to have an access for cyclists who may be on the road into the cycle lane. And we would say there's an existing crossing here, which we it's, it's, it's actually one of the only crossings that we've kept in the plan because it's an existing crossing. <coughs> Uh, which allows the, the cyclists coming inbound to then cross the road and get onto the other side to continue their journey. So in terms of the cross section, two 
two meters cycleways, one point eight foot waves. <laughs> We've got three lanes of traffic here, and actually it moves onto four lanes close to the junction, quite similar to how the current layout is, although we don't have the cycle lane running through the middle anymore. So, as I said, we can come back to any aspects of those layouts that you may want to later on when I've finished the final few slides in the presentation. Uh, in terms of uh, what we feel that we've achieved with the design and basic elements of the design, in terms of bus lane optimization, the actual difference in total length of bus lane to what is currently there at the moment is 190 metres. And we've actually taken away some of the inbound bus lane and added on those small sections of outbound bus lane approaching Elizabeth Way and King's Hedges Road. In terms of cycle, enhanced cycle, segregated cycling infrastructure, and I just need to check with Neil, Neil, does this relate to all cycling or just segregated? Yeah, sorry, it's all cycling. Sorry, this, this relates to all cycle lane, not, not just the segregated cycle lane. So, Current 2,575 metres, final concept 4,300 metres, and a lot of that will also obviously be two way cycle, two way cycle lanes on the outbound side of the road. Uh, and you may wonder why the inbound figure 685 is lower, that's because currently inbound the cycles share the bus lane, so they really count that as a cycle lane. So I think, I mean, the final concept, concept does deliver well for cycles. So as mentioned earlier, <coughs> I know some may disagree slightly, but the Avenue of Trees has maintained along the majority of the route where we, where we could. Uh, in terms of the trees, obviously, as we've gone over before, the, the current trees will have to be removed because in, in delivering this, scheme we will have to kind of take out the whole road basically. So we need to work out which are the best trees to, to put in after, you know, when the scheme is built. Uh, and just to note that there will be semi mature trees that we're putting in, so we won't be putting in saplings. And all elements of the, the, the kind of the final tree design we're gonna we're gonna hold the workshop in the summer so we can get members of the LLF and also experts from Cambridge City Council, tree experts, to, to help us to, to work up that final design. As mentioned earlier, consideration to be given to the street, streetscape uh, in front of the local shops. Uh, I think I've also got a picture of a recent kind of scheme, I think it's Columns Lane. Uh, and this is the kind of what height tree are they? Five meters. Kind of this is a kind of the five meter the vision of a five meter tree that might be put in. And that's the size they are. Yeah, and that is the size that the trees will be when they're put in. So in terms of meeting the objective uh, capacity for sustainable trips. Obviously, we're looking at significant improvements to the facilities for pedestrians and cyclists uh, compared to the current situation. I think, compared to a do nothing scenario, the modelling predicts, and so I won't dwell too much on the modelling, but it predicts that the 2031 peak time bus reliability can be improved by this design in both directions of travel, travel, and that specifically. Uh, well, definitely applies to the outbound where we are applying small sections of bus lane that aren't currently there. In terms of the improvements that we're hoping to achieve, well, what the modelling says we may achieve, uh, compared to a do nothing scenario, we're possibly looking at a 4.1 minute journey, average journey time saving for the outbound bus travelling peak time, and slightly less, 1.3 minutes for the inbound. But you would expect a, 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 a smaller number for the inbound. And these numbers, they seem small, but when you add up 
the number of minutes saved, the number of buses, the number of people on the bus, and all of these elements, they start to help you to build a, a business case, and they, they start to give you a reason as to why the, sort of, the bus priority is important. So in terms of this, uh, this objective, in terms of maintaining or de decreasing current traffic levels, uh, obviously in part, the final concept aim, aims to enhance the facilities, pedestrian cycles and public transport. So we're hoping through providing these enhancements, we can encourage a shift towards these other modes of transport. Obviously, I mentioned earlier, we've got a backdrop of increasing population and economic growth. Uh, the modelling actually shows that the final concept design has the capacity to deal with slight increases to current levels of traffic. And you may say, why are we developing a scheme that actually improves the situation for cars on Milton Road? Uh, we're happy that we've managed to get that slight increase in capacity, because what we aim to do is to look further within the detailed design phase for ways that we can maybe prioritise buses even, even better and perhaps give that slight advantage that we've gained to the buses and ideas for that may include uh, smarter signals, so what are they called? Hurry, hurry, call, hurry calls and signals for the buses uh, and also possibly bus gates which allow the buses through in advance of cars into sections of road such as on Newmarket Road currently. Obviously we need to look closely at those designs because sometimes they actually don't particularly work in a certain situation. So that's all part of uh, detailed design traits. So that's the scheme. Uh, coming up in the near future, we obviously have the Greater Cambridge Partnership Joint Assembly, uh, which is on Wednesday. Uh, ignore that second date because it's wrong, that's actually a Saturday. So on the 21st of July, which is Friday, deadline for questions to the Executive Board. And some of you I know have already submitting question, submitted questions to the Assembly. You may want to reissue those, those same questions to the Executive Board. Uh, and during the summer and autumn this, this year, we move into the detailed design phase, and I mentioned that we will hold various uh, local liaison forum workshops. Uh, I mentioned already the trees, but we'll also hold workshops for the design of bus stops and fairly well linked to bus stops, the location of crossing points on Milton Road. Then, not exactly sure on the date yet, so winter, spring, maybe early, early 2018. The executive board will, as officers, we will have had to work up this detailed design. Uh, we'll have submitted another report to the executive to the assembly and the board with our detailed design, and they will have to consider that, and then they will consider whether we can then move on to a final public consultation on the on the on the final design. So. The next part, the questions. So I'm going to ask some of my colleagues to come up to the front to perhaps help me answer some of the questions. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, try and phrase a question so that it will help you perhaps ask questions to the executive board. So what, what the aim of this is that you've seen, you've seen the scheme that we've presented as officers. We've submitted that to the board now. Uh, so. You, mm -hmm as members of the public, stakeholders, local liaison forum, you, you, you need now to ask questions to help you understand maybe what you need to be questioning the board. And then finally, this is the correct date, uh, so the comments and further questions to the board need to be submitted no later than 10 a.m. on the 21st of July. <laughs> Why has that got an RDI? <laughs> <laughs> At that website.
take three at a time. So maybe if we take those three there, and then we'll come across here and work backwards. Yeah, I should say we've got till eight o'clock, so we've got some time for questions. You're welcome to do. <laughs> so if uh, the three uh, there, and then we'll have hands up again. <laughs> okay, so you briefly mentioned the safety audit process. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Has there been a safety audit yet? Is it a continuous process? Um, and particularly on the roundabout with um, the Elizabeth Way Junction, how is your design here proposing safer from what, than um, what we've got there now? And particularly, why do you think that the um, Highworth Avenue Junction should remain um, open? Yeah, take off, sorry, sorry. Right, very quickly, and it won't be a question for the board, but in your photo, in your um, concept design, the bus stop on the uh, left-hand side going inwards after the Union Lane Junction, I just wondered when you will finalise exactly where it will go, because it does, when the bus is stopped there, it holds up the traffic quite severely, so I'd quite like to see it moved along, and I just wondered at what stage you would decide on the final location. Okay. Hi. Um, do you propose that cyclists should be permitted in uh, to cycle in bus lane sections and have you done any modelling or analysis of how much more hostile the layout may be for cyclists who don't choose to use the segregated facilities? Thank you. So three, safety audit. So in terms of the safety audit, it's a two-stage safety audit process. Um, so this is a concept, so it hasn't gone through. We've had an initial, got some ideas around the safety, but it hasn't gone through a formal safety audit yet. It's a concept. Um, that'll be definitely the next stage we commit into. Uh, we haven't put anything forward that we're not happy to kind of develop in something we can put forward into um, a safety audit. Um, but that hasn't gone through that process as yet. Um, why we feel the, was it Elizabeth? <coughs> Highworth Avenue, why not close Highworth Avenue? Um, we feel that that's a lower flow coming out of that arm on that junction. Uh, we put the two way um, cycleway across there, we feel we can step that back um, so we can still achieve a, a, a decent level of safety whilst providing um, all, all arms of that uh, junction to be open, which was something that the residents are quite keen to maintain because we, we aim to. And balance and all these things to balance between all of them, but we thought that the, the suggestion we put forward is, is safe. Um, I'll stop. Yeah. Bus stop. Bus stop. This section here. This section. No bus stops obviously shown on here at the moment. Um, that, as uh, Paul said, uh, we will have a, a dedicated workshop where we look at the location of bus stops with the LLF. Um, and crossing will be part of that as well. Um, and we'll, we'll seek to. But, you know, meet, meet, understand the residents' concerns, uh, come forward with some suggestions ourselves that help um, educate that, um, and, then, and then look to where those can be located. I think I understand, I also understand your concern of the bus stop. I think it's located. It's the, located, yeah, and yeah. it blocks the traffic. Yeah, so when you're in the junction, you can't go through. So, yeah. yeah, we understand that. Thanks. Okay. And then more aggressive, uh, more aggressive using the uh, cycle, uh, the bus lanes. Well, the, the provision the provision we put in is obviously we put in more segregated cycle lanes in the hope that cyclists won't be using um, the bus lane, and that's one of the issues that slows down buses at the moment is cyclists uh, in the bus lane and the bus being able to pass them. So I guess the design is focused around providing segregation so that that, that isn't essentially uh, people aren't in the bus bus lane to free that up. I think, I mean, from having discussed with, with Matt from Cam Cycle, the, the key is to make the cycling infrastructure good enough so that the cyclists actually want to use it. But supposing they don't. Supposing they don't. Do what you do to cars in the cycling. I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> supposing they don't. Uh, we, I can't, we can't answer that question. I, I'm one of those cyclists who may not use the bike lane all the time. So I understand where your question is coming from. And I understand that, 
you know, drivers are sometimes more hostile if you don't use the if cyclists are not using what they do the physical infrastructure they should be using and they're interfering with their journey. So this is an issue. We've had to make a decision, obviously, are we putting a cycle lane on, on the carriageway or are we trying to segregate it? The, what we, feedback has come that there, there wants to be a green buffer in the segregation of cycling, that's what we try to put it on the Can I, I know the hands are going up over there, they weren't there initially, can I take those that were there initially? So I think, are you okay? Can I take, right, can I take these three? three? Uh, very simple. You mentioned light control crossings in your PM. Will those be permanent light control crossings or will they be restricted to peak hours only? Because for most of the day there's no real congestion problem in those Can we come back to that? There are sections of uh, Milton Road where the uh the access to driveways drops away quite steeply down to the level of the houses and the, the gardens which are used. The, this causes immense flooding problems um, on, Milton, uh, on the pavement itself, on the footpath. Um, how are you going to overcome that as an issue um, while it's still enabling cars to access the front gardens, which is a bit crucial? And the second point is, are you still thinking in terms of floating bus stops or um, are they going to be back on the pavement? We can hold those and can I take this? Sorry, that. I'll take, uh, and then I'll take you uh, in the next three. That's okay. First of all, I'd like to give you an answer. Um, if you don't want to use the cycle way enough to spend all this money putting it in, use the public highway and don't use the bus line. So the question is, do you think three metres is enough for a bus lane? The reason I ask the question, you reduce Hills Road down to six metres. If you have two large vehicles trying to pass each other, they end up in mirrors. So if you're only giving me three metres and you've got a lorry that's slightly offline in the flow of traffic, I can't get through. And do you really need three metres of cycle lane, if you've got two work cycling, or two metres on either side if you've got single track. Could you not give me 0.2 of a metre more? First question. Yeah, yeah so the pedestrian, the pedestrian cycle crossing would be on demand. Uh, Basically, when you press the button, you get a call. But would a few times you prefer to not? Yeah, they, they, yeah, I mean, we'll have to look into, in the detail done in the peak period, maybe they come on a, on a regular basis, but outside of the peak, they'll be on the so they wouldn't be triggering when there's no one there. Um, in terms of dealing with the uh, drainage, and that is something we wanted to deal with in the detailed design, but uh, things we're looking at in rain gardens to help take away some of that and soak away. So that's something we'll have to look at in the, in the structure of it, and we'll do some cross sections and we'll work with residents again in terms of some of those features we'll be putting in to maintain the design. Uh, yes, and we're, we're looking at we're designing within 3D uh, construction so you can, we can kind of sew some cross sections through that and, and able to show you as we come forward. But that's something where we walk the room with uh, the council's drainage team, we're aware of where the issues are and where things have been reported by residents in the past. And that's very forefront of our mind as we take it into detail to sign going forward. But I think it's fair to say every household will be contacted, so if there are issues, then let us know. I mean, in terms of um, existing crossings, some people haven't got crossings, but we use them, I understand that. Um, so we will formalise those crossings. Normally there will be a cost in that, there won't be a cost in that, because that will be done as part of the scheme. So people can take the opportunity of putting proper crossings in. Uh, maybe we don't currently have to. Yes, yes, drop, yeah, drop the curves, sorry, yeah, yes. Yeah. Vehicular crossings to their properties. Okay. And Andy, yes, um, these are indicative kind of uh, cross sections at the moment, and we have to work with where, so the aggregate, so sometimes there's a lot more space than we've got here, so where we can, we appreciate that we need to make the bus lane slightly wider and we'll put to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it can work. Um, what, so do you want to do, yeah. 
checks do you have on the consistency of your documentation, given that the Milton Road final concept design on our handouts demolishes two roads and renames <laughs> them? Can I take two more? Two more on this side. So I'll work. I'll come back. Can I can I work back down and then? So sorry, two ladies at the back. Speak up, please. Sorry, there's a lady just behind me. Sorry, I'll come. Yes. Um, given that the new market road in is a good way round that, while it's much traffic flow flow is much better when the lights are not working, will there be um, signals round the uh, Elizabeth Way Highland Avenue junction be working all day and night, or will they only be only in the periods when the traffic flow is up? Okay. Uh, apologies for the missed roads on this map. It's been put together and it's more of a kind of quick taster of the new website and how the, the new website will look. So basically this is what I've impressed today. We're working with a graphic designer to try and get uh, a decent representation of Milton Road onto one page. Uh, and yeah, apologies, a couple of roads are missing. Your point is well made. Thank you. Uh, Have you answered my question, or are you just about to? What checks are there going to be on the consistency between paper, between, and how do you check that you're actually not proliferating this kind of error? It is a good point. We will check them. The problem is these are external. It's not. Your problem is our problem. These are external people that are doing work for us and we expect it to be right. We will check them in future to make sure they are right. Trees. 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 Uh, as, as mentioned in the presentation, yeah, we will work with tree officers and the ILF to find the, the, correct, the, the best species uh, of you know, yeah. the trees. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Two or three species of trees, the best species that will thrive in the Milton Road environment. So at the moment we've got cherry trees, will you be proposing to replace them? It's quite featured on the road, so yeah. residents yeah. enjoy yeah. and campaign yeah. about it. We look forward to taking the action. That will be part of the process we're going through. The, the snag with cherry trees, as you all know, is they are shallow rooted trees and lift the pavements quite dramatically. Yeah. Um, so, I understand that people want the flower out of them. It is a discussion and debate to have. We have not made any decision if that's the will of uh, the residents, that if we can plant them in a way that stops them from getting into the footways and the cycleways, then that's obviously what we'll look to do. So that is part of the discussion and the debate. And I understand where you're coming from. Cherry trees are beautiful for that period uh, that they are in bloom. Sorry, can you just remind me of your question? Yes. Oh, um, I guess that's something we need to look at um, in detail. I mean, we've just looked at the peak hour situation in terms of how we develop the concepts. We always look at the worst case. In terms of um, outside of the peak hour, that's something we can certainly look into and consider um, in terms of modelling when we look at the interpeak, the outside of the peak period and the detailed design. Has it been too old? We're happy to look into that. That's not a problem. Okay, well, can I'm working down this way. Could I just clarify when you asked, answered the question about will bus stops float? I wasn't sure if you'd answered that. So, in terms of the bus stop discussion, what we're going to come forward as part of the workshop is going to present to you, uh, the LLF, with a range of different options um, and, and uh, visualizations of a standard bus stop we can use of which one will be floating. But are there be other options there? We'll, and let's have that discussion around which we feel is best suited for each location uh, along the Belt of Road. Because it's easy, I'll take three in a row. So the lady there, the lady there, and from there. Okay, so, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, on your final slides, so the parents, for example, bus lanes, and then the future bus lanes, which is great. If you 
very helpful to add a, to a slide where you can talk about trees and landscaping. So compare the current situation with what you're proposing. So for example, how many trees are we losing? How much of the landscape here are we losing or gaining? Yeah, that can certainly be done. Done that we're losing something. Sorry, should be answering it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned new bus services. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Okay. Um, you indicated that the pavements are going to be 1.8 metres wide, and not seen in comparison with what they are at the moment. Nor have you indicated, uh, from my position back here, as to whether those are shared with cyclists at any point um, I share Mr. Campbell's uh, view regarding the bus lanes mirrored across the pavements. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to know whether you've actually done any consultation with people. Okay, in terms of landscaping, yeah, that's, well, we haven't uh, looked in detail at landscaping trees yet, but in the, in the, in the future design stage, that is something that we will put, put together. It would just provide a more accurate representation of what you're actually proposing. Yeah, that's fine, that's understood. I guess the element that's slightly more unknown with the landscaping is utilities underneath the ground, and we obviously need to accommodate that. So we don't want to give any, we've indicated the areas where we're looking to have landscaping, but we need to understand fully what's in that location in terms of utilities under there before we can give any definitions of where tree pits are best located. So in terms of like the number of trees, difficult to give that kind of detail because so until we get into more detailed design. Sorry, I have asked me other question because it's been asked me about the trees. It's, people ask me, say, I've got trees there already, so why can't you? That, that kind of indicates that trees can go there now. But the way the trees are planted now, apparently, their roots are intertwined amongst the utility cables that run underneath. So it's not as simple as if there's a tree now there in that exact location now that's the best place for a tree in the future. We, we, we don't know until we've actually surveyed properly. Okay, and then the footway, with the existing footway winds. <laughs> so, yeah, in terms of additional bus services, I don't know if Andy minds saying again, just to, as a commitment there. <laughs> 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 Go on, say it again. Go on, Andy. <laughs> There will be a frequent stopping service when uh, Water Beach gets its new development. Um, we're also considering. Is that an addition to the first time? Speak up. Um, it probably would replace the short number nine, but not the long number nine. We're also looking at uh, the frequency of services from Northstone and whether we have some of those stuff. We're currently running an end service, and before you shout at me, I know it doesn't stop on Milton Road, but it won't stop. Um, but the numbers travelling to the station, the new station, are very disappointing. And we may have to look at what we're currently doing, and that may include a stopping service. Somewhere. So, do you mean buses for the number of passengers going to the station? Sorry? Do you mean the number of buses or number of passengers going to the station? No, the number of buses is absolutely excellent. <laughs> I don't know it's there. And then in terms of the yes. pedestrian cycle segregation, um, we, we're set, what's set out here in terms of pedestrians is the pedestrians with a segregated cycle lane. We're not, in, unless it's indicated in very, very small areas around the junction where we've got shared surface, everywhere else we're looking at um, complete segregation, that's the end. Right, so you've got 1.8 metre footways which are then robbed um, when it comes to cable cabinets and road signs and that kind of thing. Is that the correct interpretation? 1.8 metres is a standard width for a footway. <coughs> it, isn't, it isn't that it's substandard. And yes, there is a lot of stuff going in the road these days, but, but it is a standard width for the footways 1.8. It was the old six foot. I still work in Imperial. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've been very patient down the front. Can I take, I'll, I'll take these four here. We can't remember three, so four's going to be difficult. So, three gentlemen. Okay, we, you, yes, and lady there. Okay, good. So, so, you justify removing the bus lane outside the shops for the 
plus five years old at the moment, on the fact it's insufficient width. Why can't you apply that to the narrowest section of Newton Road, which is south of Ashton Road and Gilbert Road? Sure. Hold that. So also, sorry, on that also sorry. <coughs> part of the justification was the fact that give the buses a head start. I think that's what you said. What effect, surely what, what happened to affect all the way down Milton Road, not just in this section? It should have an effect on the southern side as well, because there were buses that continue down Milton Road. Can we, yeah. we hold that, gentlemen, next year? Oh, yeah. Currently, there is a, a crossing from Chester Hall Crescent to the Catholic Church. And this has, uh, we're talking pedestrians here, and it's a school crossing. And that merges with traffic, pedestrians, skateboard, little kids on bikes coming down to Ashen Road from from uh, You don't have that there. And uh, the other thing is it's got a very, very wide footpath where it's shared by mums, skateboards, little kids on bikes, and cyclists. And, and to cross there and have a segregated one, I don't know. Are talking about here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. Jump yeah, next. So I'm more interested in City Councillor, so thanks for letting me ask the question in this uh, forum, because I think it's a good question to ask in public. And the question is, how, I'm not quite sure how we got to the stage where the cycle ways are segregated from the road behind the trees. Now, I say that having already been in all the workshops in the last autumn, and here the discussions about things like safety or less pollution and such like behind the trees. And obviously, as a councillor, I'm very keen to support residents in their views who won't get elected next time. But <laughs> I'm not quite sure that the new optimum scheme was all the way along saying that the cycleway should go behind the trees. And I'm the lead councillor for cycling in the city. I want to support residents, but I also have a view about safety in more general terms. Now, if it's to, what I want to know from you, the question quite simply is, why are you behind the trees? What's the most important point? And if you're going to say safety, is, is there some sort of analysis that's been done with regard to the safety of crossing minor junctions with your Copenhagen crossings? Because I'm concerned about that. I could say more, but I'll stop there. Okay. Okay, mine's the same as the gentleman down there, Councillor Jerry Bird here. The pathway is 1.8 metres. Um, further along it was 2 metres, and we came back up, it's again 1.8. You don't realise, you say that's why, but it's not when you've got people passing each other and you've got overgrown bushes from people's gardens, which affect the pavements as well. And one of the slides you showed, it looked like we were right against the, the person's boundary near enough. And also, uh, my last question is the, the verge. You've got one of the verges is three metres. Why is it three metres, but the pavement's only 1.8? Okay, so bus line, and why we can take it out of one area? One yeah, I mean, the key element of being able to take it out must be Elizabeth Way and um, uh, Aubrey Ray. Um, it's because we can signalise between, because if we can signalise both junctions, we can enable those to better work together. Um, and that enables general flow of traffic is particularly more efficient in that area and that enables the buses to be carried through that. It's such a small section that giving them priority in that section, we've tried to weigh it up. As we know, it's a, it's a width, we've got limited width here, we've got to decide what we're going to do with those elements. We've got other elements for shops and parking in that area. So in that section we feel we can get an optimisation between those two junctions where we, we, you know, ideally we'd like to have a bus lane, but we feel that if we're going to let it go at any point, that's the area where so won't well, that effect continue beyond the roundabout going down south of Milton Road? Because the bus will have a head start. So why is there the necessity to have a steady dedicated bus lane from Ashton Road and to Gilbert Road? That lane. So, so why just keep it? Because <coughs> they won't have a traffic flow. Yeah. The traffic flow will be reduced because of the what you're getting so we just bring up, If we bring out that element, so it's easier to... Uh, So we're crossing that section at that point. I mean, yeah, because it, that, that is the section. It doesn't have an avenue of trees. And yeah, you know, yes, I appreciate you, it. And, you were, and you were, <coughs> you're presenting it saying, well, it's not, narrow, it's not wide enough to have that. Yeah. If 
the bus lane wasn't there, it would be light. It would, but uh, the queuing at Gilbert Road means we need to enable the bus. We may have a head start, but then we don't want it to get involved in the queuing that's coming back from Gilbert Road. It doesn't have to be the length from Ashton Road down to Gilbert Road. It could be from, say, either George Street or Herbert Street. That would be quite sufficient, a length, to have. And these, are, and these are elements that, you know, we're not saying that all these uh, bus lanes that they're showing here are sacrosanct, some of those will have to go further in terms of how we take the concept. This is a concept. What we're trying to show here is show where we are dealing with the bus lanes. If we, if we, through the modelling of what we're doing in the future that indicates that some of that can be reduced without impacting on the bus priority, then we can look into that. Um, but what we don't want to do is show uh, that cut back right now and then we're looking to increase in the future. We'd rather show what you know what we'd ideally like to have in terms of bus lanes, and then we can work with all these elements in terms of how that space is used. As you know, you know we have to make some hard decisions in some areas of this in terms of what we're putting forward. So you're open to reducing the bus lane uh, As officers, we are presenting a concept. I think it's a, th these questions need to be asked of the executive board. Are they? I mean, we're presenting what we feel is required to, for buses to. To approach this junction, but we're we're not really able to say where where we can compromise in terms of that. Oh. But, but that's that's a board decision ultimately to make in terms of where where we have these difficulties over where the space is used. What what is the board's direction in terms of how we should prioritise it? Well, the detailed design still has to be done. So the answer is yes. They will be looked at as part of the detailed design. These aren't. Sacrosanct in that sense. In terms of the crossing, um, so that it wasn't shown, wasn't the crossing, but with one exception, none of the crossings are shown now. Cross small. Cross small. We're talking about this crossing here. Yeah. It's crossing just uh, Chesterton Hall Crescent across the Catholic yeah. 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 That crossing is, yeah, so existing crossings are oh, still there. highlighted yeah. on there. No, I'm just yeah, not there. So, in terms of... Sorry, did it, was there an extra question? Yeah, um, well, uh, one, about the crossing, and two, it's the nature of the people who use the crossing in peep outs, which is mums, school kids, yeah. little toddlers, they're all going to Milton Road, and currently the pavement there is very wide, and it suits that sort of traffic, kids with skateboards, kids on bikes, and mums and dads, and I don't know whether it would suit from a safety point of view, but you just for sure, um, have a separate uh, cycle and pay for um, the desk. It's a good point and one we'll have to take on in, in the detailed design. Okay, so then the question is why... I mean, so, obviously it's that the hedges, in terms of the pavement being 1.8, um, all the hedges will need to be taken back as part of this work. Um, Back to the, we need to the, absolutely, given how tight everything is, we need to take it back to the high, to the highway boundary. So hedges will need to be cut back as part of that. Um, and in terms of yeah, how that that area is shared, it's again, as Chris said, it's a standard one point. I appreciate that there's a lot of different users on here, um, and, and it is that balance between cyclists and pedestrians and trying to keep that segregated. Um, I guess. There's, that's all, you know, we're trying to make the best balance we can with the, with the, with the available um, space we've got. But I think it's fair to say if we're showing the three metre verge and we're showing 1.8 metre foot, yeah. footways, we'll take the opportunity to widen footways up. Yeah, I mean, that's at the very far end, um, really where most pedestrian elements are. Um, I guess towards that end, there needs to be a bit more thought maybe given to how it's, it's spaced up, but that's kind of towards the end of, of the main pedestrian. Element. Flows, I guess. Um, so yeah, we can look at that element of that. That's certainly something we can, we can look at balancing that. The gentleman about um, why are the trees and the verges on the roadside of the cycleway? So um, what's not shown on this concept, and just because it is a concept, is is all the drop curves, um, which are going to break up some of that that green area. Um, so it's not a continuous kind of barrier there. Um, what's come through is that was a concept that was obviously suggested in the new Optimum that came forward. Um, we feel with, um, that it, in terms of segregating and giving people maybe more confidence in their cycling by having a green buffer there, uh, that's something that, that came forward quite strongly in the other discussions that I was part of. Uh, so that's what we've tried to accommodate. Uh, we don't feel there's any necessarily any 
um, safety, big safety concerns that have come forward at the moment, but as part of the safety audit, that will be looked at, um, and we'll have, we'll have to go through that process. Uh, there will certainly be a number of checks through the process to, before anything gets, gets put into the detailed design. Yeah, and the Copenhagen, Copenhagen style crossings, those need to be considered in the same way. We need to get to a detailed design of exactly how that's going to work, but obviously those concepts are used elsewhere in, the UK, in terms of the Copenhagen crossing. Have we got a picture of the crossing? No. Does it come and get them on the website? Uh, yes, I don't know. We'll put one up on the website. Uh, can I just work now from there, this way, back round? Round again. Oh yeah, um, Councillor Kevin Price, King Sedges. Could we go to the section that was um, going out of town from King Sedges Road, please? You talked about the, the existing crossing. Now, I'm either going to get shot down in flames here telling me I don't know what's going on in my ward, but I thought, <laughs> I, I'll soon find out, I thought that crossing was between King's Edges Road in, yes. and Lovell Road. I it's before yes. Lovell Road and not after it. Yeah. And if, if so, will you change that to... Reflect that. Things do, but we'll, we'll, we will look at all the crossings later on. Just shows off that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you'll see that award. Thank you. And, uh, and, uh, and I think, as we, we said, in terms of the bus stops, we said earlier today, in terms of the bus stops, we are going to look at the crossings. So um, we've stated quite clearly in the literature that all the crossings are indicative at the moment, and we want to have that discussion to understand how we can use it, how it works at the bus stops. Um, and, and we've been quite clear that that's something that we're happy to have a discussion on. That crossing has been put there to tie up with the end of that two way cycle lane to allow the cyclists coming inbound to cross. So I think that's the reason it's been put on there. I don't have a prob necessarily a problem with it moving. I, what you, you said it was the existing crossing. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that's a bit of Okay. Three. So one, two, three. It's a very selfish question. Going back to Harworth Avenue, uh, the roundabout there, we have the house at, at, uh, at 11 o'clock on the roundabout. That would be great if we can take it back. Um, yes, sorry. Yeah. 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 Too fast. Yeah, it's too fast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've got the question that day. <laughs> uh, yeah, where the little, uh, 11 o'clock, where the little white patch is there, our house is that, that house there, yeah. Um, access and egress there is, is difficult as it is at the minute. We, we have to reverse it and, and widen our entrance so that we can take it and have, because cyclists come down quite fast from Highworth Avenue, um, it's a blind corner there. If we're going to have two lanes there of traffic, for me to stop and reverse in there, is, could be a problem. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have cars backing up behind me as I, as I pull out the reverse of that stop, entrance. Stop. Next question. Yes, yeah. Next question. Um, well, I'm a cyclist, and I expect you've thought of this, but I'm just checking. Um, where you've got your cycle lanes that are two-way, um, I'm just a lone cyclist, but you get you get now cycles that are quite wide, where you know a father <laughs> or a mother is cycling. One of those, I forget what you call them, but you know, quite wide vehicles, and so child carriers. Okay. And then if you've got two-way, you've got enough space for that. You were saying you can synchronise the lights of Arbury Road from the Highworth Junction. Have you synchronised them with Newmarket Road? The track pedestrian crossings down in this way is on the inbound route, particularly in the mornings. It is tailing back right the way from Newmarket Road, right the way back up to the South Park. Okay. So can we take so can we take the first question about access? So yeah, in terms of access, so, so you're the person that's going to cause us all this. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, so we thought we might want it. Yeah, we've well, got yeah, we don't really want that. Um, that would not be the case. <laughs> So also, yes, that presents uh, a design issue. There's another access similarly here, and another access here, and two points down here. So um, any design that came forward will obviously be considered what's existing there, although it's not ideal in terms of standards. So I think when we get to an like that, 
Is it taking up opportunity to actually come up with a, a more detailed design, sitting down with you as a resident of that property and, and talking through uh, design ideas with you? Um, we are also looking to accommodate, as kind of indicating there, but that very crude just bit of great, but we're looking to accommodate your access and we'll have to talk through with you about how, how that best works on a case by case basis. So thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, and then in terms of the width of the two way cycling, three metres and the kitty carriers? Um, again, it, it comes down to um, accommodation. I, I can't off the top, top of my head tell you what the width of a, one of those uh, mates on can. Uh, in terms of there, but we can only give um, so much space to each mode. Uh, three metres, uh, there's a two-way cycling there. We hope, you know, the chances of two coming and not being able to cross in that one element, it's difficult for us to plan a whole scheme based on, on something like that element happening when there's lots of different users. So, um, we, we've given as much space as we, as we can to that element, and I've got to think that technically you probably could get carefully one past another with that sort of space. But um, you've got raised curves, right? Yes. You've got, yeah, yeah the, the, we, yeah, I guess it's give and take in terms of seeing seeing someone coming in and, and, and accommodation. We haven't looked at the curve designs yet, but we'll have to look at that in terms of accommodation of that um, and how we, we do that. Um, there's obviously the drop curves as well that are coming through, which will alter certain elements, but they may be passing places if you can see someone coming. Uh, if these are elements we do need to consider in the detailed design department. And then in terms of new market growth and new I mean, uh, ideally, uh, throughout the whole of the city, we, we'd have some sort of uh, mechanism that all the signals could be uh, coordinated together. Um, I'm not sure if something is coming forward, I believe that possibly that is another element of the city deal that's coming forward in looking at maybe Chris can have that um, extend on that. Yeah, so what we're in the process of commissioning is a full review of all 184 uh, sets of signals we've got in the city with a view to upgrading those to the most efficient and effective that there are available in the country, so with the most efficient and effective uh, uh, network in the city. Having said 184, the majority are actually pedestrian uh, crossing signals, but even so, we're looking at all of them to make sure we can link everything and make it uh, very efficient. It is one of the things that have been put back to us on a number of occasions, make best use of what we've currently got um, before we start looking at uh, putting other um, infrastructure in. So that, that's about to be commissioned now. Um, in fact, it's going to the board on the same paper that this is on, you'll see on City Access uh, report, there is a report saying we are going out to do a review of the signal network within Cambridge. Uh, I'll work, go, go, I'll, one, two, three, and then I will work backwards. Yes, I'm concerned about the width of the bus lane, as Mr. Campbell has pointed out. Could you just um, remind us what the current width of the bus lane is? I'm presuming it would be about 3.65, something like that. Standard road width is standard lane width 3.65. Having said that, I shall now bring my hometown into play, which is Durham. There is a bridge, the one bridge across the river, that is four lanes three metres and it carries 100,000 vehicles a day. So it's, a, it's as busy. So they can be accommodated. I'm not saying that it's the ideal and we will look at trying to widen it up as much as possible. The reason I ask is that it's already, if you are even in a car on the inbound route and a bus comes whistling past, they feel dreadfully close to the car. and. We don't want to be in a situation where wing mirrors could risk hitting another vehicle. I've once had that, it nearly shot me out. Yes, exactly. We all have that. As I say, the, the widths are averages, um, and where we've got the ability, we're obviously looking to, to make elements such as the bus lane wider where we can. It's getting that balance. Obviously, you're giving. Um, more space to one mode, you take it from another, there's no magic way of doing this. So yes, I appreciate what you're saying. The, the widths we've taken are on average, so in elements we're going to have much wider, we'll be able to accommodate that, in other elements we'll have to make a decision on, on what's giving way to enable that to happen. Sorry, I, I didn't follow my own rules here, so <laughs> two more, sorry. Uh, you show in your, in your document a two-year construction time for this sort of uh, 
after the decisions are made, has the kind of economic cost um, and the social cost of, of that two-year construction period included in your modeling? We'll come back to that. Um, yeah. uh, I, I'm still concerned about some of these two-way cycle paths, and you're saying that with the cycle things it's optional if they, because at the moment they cycle in every direction on the path, they cycle across the red lines. Surely there needs to be a system which uh, gives some enforcement. Uh, is there going to be any way? Uh, do they have free range going on it? The path, the cycle range, and the road? Okay. Um. So my question is about the optimum manner of identifying other junctions to help cyclists use the cycle lane on the opposite side of the road. Um, I'm thinking particularly about crossing by Westbrook Drive. Um, so how are cyclists meant to turn right across three lanes of traffic to access the cycleway on the opposite side of the road? Okay, so the first one was about the economic benefits and the cost of construction. Yeah, so obviously this is a concept that's been put forward at the moment. We need to know that we're going ahead with a concept and we get a more detailed design to get something. Uh, it's obviously changed a lot the design as we come through the process, so we need to have that commitment, although we will undertake a costing exercise and look at it in terms of the benefits as well. We need to produce a, what's called a benefit cost ratio, so justify the kind of expense relative to the economic social benefits that are coming forward, and that exercise will be undertaken as the next stage as part of this. Um, so that, that will be uh, occurred. But my question on top of that was that it's a two-year construction program. That's an awful lot of disruption to an awful lot of people, both residents and, and others. That has a significant cost. It does, but the models do not take that into account, unfortunately. <laughs> it's worked on the basis that roads in general have to be maintained and upgraded. And that's just one of the things. So what we will do um, when it comes to the construction we will be sitting down again through the RLF to look at how it's all going to be phased to try and minimise the impact of that because we do appreciate that it causes major mayhem for residents who live on the road. Is that why construction time is yeah. so long? Yeah. And what do you make it two years, three years, four years? Some of it is just the realism of the amount of traffic that's on there and keeping the traffic flows going and trying to work around and doing it in a way that actually doesn't close the road down completely. Other than it, if we have to alter utilities, there's a long leading time for doing utilities, gas, electric, and so on. So it does take a while, but all of that will come back when we've got a scheme and we can sit down and say, we've now got a contractor, we will involve the contractor early, uh, early contractor involvement as we call it, to make sure that we can do the work as quickly and with the least disruption that we, we can do, and sometimes it's the least disruption to traffic as well that, that's going to be factored in. Okay, in terms of the latest question. Just remind me. Enforcement. Enforcement. Um, yeah, um, the reality is, um, well, I have to, we have to consider anything you might be aware of elsewhere, but I'm not. I think we can all we can do is provide the facilities, as Paul has said, and if they're decent facilities, we hope that people use them as they're intended. But in terms of actual day-to-day -day enforcement, I'm not aware of anything that could really be put in, in place to uh, force people to take the, the, the areas. We're so short of space in going both ways. I would query whether why we can't have one going on one side and one going on the other. So in earlier context, we had on, on one of these way, and the feedback uh, seeming overwhelmingly from the last LLF was that two-way was something that the residents really did want. Um, so that's what we did. And, and yeah, for the school consideration for um, the children more on that side of the road. So uh, obviously there's going to be different views from different residents along the road, um, but that's what we we're going to see you uh, on later. Yes, the modelling did calculations thinking inbound towards Gilbert Road. Yeah, inbound. Does the modelling show a maximum number of vehicles or lengths of queue that would accumulate there? Is there a maximum queue length out of this model? So yes, so that, that's been published, and you, you can see that in the results in terms of what the maximum queue lengths are. What is that? You know? I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but it's in the documentation that's there, um, and that's number of vehicles. What I say is we can't just design. So we're looking for 2031, yeah. 
And we and the bombing is a guide, but apart from that, that we can't accurately predict to the vehicle how long the fuel will be in 2031. It gives us an indication of how long that will need to be to accommodate, but we also need to include other factors that we're considering in terms of uh, moving to buses in that sector, our engineering judgment, um, other elements need to consider, and some buffer to consider that there may be not exactly. So we can't just take the bombing results, say it's X amount of vehicles, and just give that the bus in particular when we're looking that far into the future. It's a guide for us. Does this impact on the length of the bus lanes you need to overtake the future? Yes, it's there to inform the kind of the minimum length that needs to be to make sure the buses aren't interrupted by not being involved in the queue that's there. But they're not the only factor to judge what the bus line length is. There was a question. Yes, no, no. I thought Mike was going to answer about the uh, two-way bus lane, bus, uh, cycle way, but it's not on in there. The gentleman about crossing uh, three, lanes of, uh, three lanes of traffic, getting onto the cycle way. So, uh, in terms of, well, in, in, if we've got lots of different programs, which section? I don't know if we can bring it up. Right, so it's specifically for the new boat on the Cambridge City football ground, there's over 100 acre homes that have been built in the last two years. And there's no way to turn right and south into the city or um, coming or back from the river. Yeah, yeah, so on the concept, we haven't included the crossing there. But that crossing, crossing to this, uh, in this location, we, we'll consider during the next. I mean, uh, absolutely so. I mean, uh, please come, we'll have a workshop on crossing locations uh, with bus stops, and, and if you'd like to be part of that, just follow it, you know. We'd like to get people who have got an opinion on those areas to come forward already at that point. So we're not trying to say that we've accommodated all the crossings at this time. Gentleman there, lady right at the back. I'll come back to the gentleman here as well, and then I'll move on that side. So I'll take the first one here, and then you, sir, and then the lady at the back. In the previous meeting, I mentioned congestion charges. I was told that's not being considered because they're addressing tax. And I should ask the question if it's good enough for them as well. It's good enough for Durham as well. I put the first one in the country, not one. Um, sorry, uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Can I ask you a question about journey time, so the, the modelling that you've done. In the, the modelling in the documentation I've seen is always is a time period in seconds from the A14 to Mitchell's Corner. Why is it modelled in that way, given that 95% of the uh, traffic turns left at Highwood Road, uh, yeah. Road rather than that? Mission Corner is a destination, no one's going there. So why don't you model actual journeys? The actual journeys that people make from their homes to their work destination. And, and secondly, given that the, the improvement in bus journey times is so small, even to 2031, is this really necessary? Is it going to change any behaviour? Yeah. Can we take the lady at back? Yes. So, uh, the LF, um, one of the resolutions was to do an audit on properties which were entirely reliant on um, street parking and to look at provision for those properties. Um, I have an interest there as being a property that is entirely reliant on one street parking and a real concern that um, the, the concept doesn't provide any loading bays so the tractor could only disrupt the highway in carrying out the world. And I just wondered at what stage, um, whether that's something which will be looked at in the next concept, or something that I should raise with the executive board, how best we should engage, or whether indeed you've looked at that and have already made decisions that there's a decision. Okay, thank you. I'll deal with the, uh, the congestion charge. Um, there has been a meeting between the assembly and the board, um, looking at a, a number of strands, one of that's transport and looking at future investment for transport and intelligent charging is something that's on the table but it is a matter that will have to be discussed at the assembly and at the board so it's not definitely off the table, it may well come back but it is an issue that um, the board will have to look at because all this at the moment is uh, a number of people that are on the assembly and the board have come together to look at future transport investment and one of the things that they've talked about is the potential of re-looking at, uh, at charging. No more than that at this stage. 
there was no commitment to anything. But yes, it has been done in London. The only thing they found in London is traffic levels are now back to where it was uh, pre-congestion charge. Although I do know that the Mayor has now said that they uh, may well have to look at extending congestion charge in the future. But there's been no more commitment than that. Um, do you want to answer the gentleman about the second? Yeah, so in terms of uh, where we take the comparison of journey, uh, journey time, obviously the element of that modelling is a comparison between each of the different scenarios we're looking at. So we can take that point at any two points essentially, is to provide, as long as that's consistent between each of the scenarios we're testing, then it's a fair comparison between each of the elements. So it's used as a comparison tool. We have to pick two points, those are the two elements. It's based on um, validated. So we do surveys of the actual road and that informs, we validate the model to match those in the base year. So we're, in effect, it's taking account of real journeys that are occurring in terms of uh, on, on that snapshot of that week where the surveys are undertaken, and that's what's used to help inform the model in terms of where that goes in the future. In terms of where the future flows are, the county's uh, CSRM, so county's sub-regional model, looks at the county as a whole in 2031, and that helps identify how flows might change based on the, um, the local uh, plan developments that are coming forward, and also um, has an ability to look at mode shift at different elements. So those elements all fed into the model. But the key thing is it's a fair comparison between each scenario, so that's, that's why we've used that element as a comparison. But you can't, you can't just make it on question for one comparison. That, that is a journey that no one's making. So why are you making decisions based on that journey? You've got to, but it's the, we're looking at where we're actually making a difference to, to Milton Road and then looking at the journey time along that section where we're actually changing something to see what that change affects in that section. So you've got to look at it as a whole. If you look at it in small sections, you get a disjointed so you picture, then if the you look at it as a whole, not the road. Yeah, which are elements of Milton Road, but some people will be travelling the length of Milton Road. Well, they're not, so those, those elements... Well, they're not. I understand the Highwood Road at 7 o'clock in the roundabout, at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, everyone's turning left down, everyone's turning left down, because they're crossing the river. They're getting across the river. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, well, we, we, we've, got the, we've got the data there, we can compare, to, you know, we've got actual traffic data that, that's there, that's been fed in. Um, so we are trying to account for the, you know, the level of, of flow that, and the way the journeys are occurring on the road. In terms of the flow is going to differ as you go up and down the road. I'm trying to give you a summary in this rather than a detailed breakdown of the one I was actually presenting to you. And the, the other thing we, we have, in fact you heard it here first and I got into bother for it. Um, we have done this automatic number plate recognition survey. And that was done at the beginning of June, just before... Uh, the uh, university uh, packed up and the schools packed up um, and we're waiting for the results of that and that actually does give us the information depending on where the cameras are located obviously but we've, we've gone as far out as the M11 up to the A14 and down to the A11 so we will have that information just to give you a, a feel and I, this isn't you know this isn't uh, a figure that is is perfectly <coughs> spot on because we need to work out there are about 300 buses um, run down and back up Milton Road, about 310 actually. If you work on an average of about 40 people per bus and work that out over a year, even though you talk small uh, figures, it was four minutes one way, one and a bit minutes the other way, it adds up to about 220 odd days a year saving. So it, it adds up to a lot of saving. It's moving big numbers of people. I mean, we're talking about 24,000 people on those buses. If it was on average 40, and I'm not being, I can't say there's on average 40, but that's over a 12 hour period. There's 24,000 people roughly using those buses. If you were to look at the number of cyclists, then over the same 12 hour period, on the figures that um, the, the LLF kindly got for us, we're looking at about 6,000. That's the sort of Differential. So, for every bit you give to buses, it makes a heck of a difference. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it, it, once you start racking up those sort of numbers, it makes a big difference. But we are having this AMPR survey that will give us exact indication of what people are doing. And that's followed on later in the year with a survey that's going out to every household. Not 
necessarily by paper, but every household engaged in Greater Cambridge, uh, about 220, uh, 120 odd thousand houses, uh, to actually find out what they would like to be able to do and what their intention is. Because what we've measured at the moment is what's currently happening as opposed to what might happen uh, if people could do what they actually wanted to do rather than having to do uh, the situation now. Sorry? Why haven't we got a final concept on the screen if you're still gathering that kind of data? Because, because that data in terms of the buses is right. That's how, not how fast we get those buses through. It's not about the cars, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not worried about the cars. The cars are the cause of the problem. If I can move people on that road faster by bus, then that's what I want to do. They're mostly out of service buses. Sorry? They're mostly out of service buses. They're accessing the... We're going down from Drummer Street up to uh, Cowley Road garage. That's most of the buses... No, no, these are scheduled services. These are scheduled services that we have counted. We've taken off the schedules, the scheduled services, over a 12 hour period. Okay, the lady at the back had a question, sorry. So in terms of, uh, we, I think we've spoken before about your, your, your being dependent on having uh, parking availabilities on, on Milton Road, and, and where services etc. might serve you. Um, that's still something that Again, it's a concept. We haven't even shown the drop curves uh, in this in this concept. It's something that you know I'm aware of that we've discussed. Uh, Paul's aware of that as well. So it is something that we'll be considering going forward. It's not something that is a is, is. right. Okay, so it's very residents parking on the street. Yeah. Right. So it's something that to be to be further discussed, and isn't something where anything to be made a decision on this time. So again, um, Greater Cambridge Partnership is working with the county and is looking at, I think there are, I can't remember the exact number of zones now, but we're working around all the areas around uh, Cambridge in, and uh, outer Cambridge, looking at putting residence parking zones in if residents want them, so that would be something that obviously we'll be looking to do, but we will be working with you, with the LLF, to look at those areas where you haven't got off-street parking and you need to do on-street parking. So, there's a lady, lady there. In terms and of street lighting and street furniture, yeah. um, hopefully you'll be encouraging pedestrians um, and cyclists, so will you be positioning and replacing the street lights? And will they be solar? Don't know, I'm sorry. Have we got another question, another couple? So the lady there, and then I'll come. Gate. So as the lady here said, 
you know, there'll be hedges, things like that, which will encroach into it. There are issues with things like people putting their bins out, and the chance that people just put their bins in the pedestrian um, pavement. Um, they are, at present, there are little verges, so people put their bins on the verge, so it doesn't block um, you know, the, the carriageway. Um, and there's also things like utility boxes at various places along the road. So where are they going to go? Are you going to have to move all the those now? Are you planning for where they're going to go? They're sort of currently right on the edge in the sort of little verge that doesn't exist now. Okay, we better deal. I'm being told we can't deal with more than four. We are men after all. And there's three of us. We can't even remember four between the three of us. Um, so, do you want to start answering the. Uh, what was the. I, think I can't even remember what the first one was. Solar lines. Solar lines. Yeah. So. Um, whilst Cambridge is probably one of the most sunnier places um, in the UK, particularly if you come from the far north and the ice wall, um, I, my own feeling will be there'll be LEDs that we will look to use, and they are really good at the LEDs, they are a fraction of the cost. The problem with solar is if you get a run of bad weather, then your lights aren't on, because there's no other way of powering them. I don't want to preempt, but I think there'll be uh, LEDs um, to start with. But the, the, um, I don't know if you've, anybody's seen some of the new LEDs, but they are really good. You get very little backlight, you get very little side light until you're actually within the zone of uh, the light, and they are excellent compared to what they used to be a few years ago. So. So yeah, so the street furniture, it will be replaced, it will be new, so the location of it will be not in the same location it is now essentially. Um, and that's something to do with looking at the utilities and understanding where they're to be located, um, and also yeah, the design of them and where we're going to accommodate them. So that, again, that's something that we haven't looked at in any detail at the moment, but we'll do going forward, but there will be new street furniture coming into play. Um, in terms of the buses and your, as you say, you rightly right say people think of themselves in terms of a five minute bus sailing on my bus journey and whether that will convince me to take a bus or not. That's also put in context of 2031 of more people, higher flows on uh, Milton Road. So the fact that we're not just maintaining but actually improving buses in, in an environment where generally traffic is going to be, you know, potentially uh, higher, so, so the number of trips that are being made around Cambridge is much higher is, is a good thing. Um, in terms of why we add it up, because uh, as we've talked around, we have to develop a benefit cost ratio. So in terms of, there's a benefit to you in five, in five minutes, so then if we extrapolate that out to all the people that say for five minutes, what does that mean in terms of their time for uh, trying to monetize that, and then look at what that equates to in terms of a benefit of well, it's, it's, it's a rather complicated way, but it's, it's something that, that has to be looked at to justify whether the expense is worth the benefits that come forward, both to uh, uh, bus users, cyclists, uh, all sorts of elements to consider. It's, it's dictated by the web tag guidance by the Department for Transport that sets all these elements out, and it's something that all large schemes are assessed against, so there's a fair comparison uh, of whether something's value for money, essentially. Um, in terms of what was your other uh, uh, so it, so we're not backtracking. So talking with um, officers, they feel that actually putting semi mature trees in gives the trees actually a better chance of survival. If you put in mature trees, um, they actually don't necessarily always take so well from that environment. So the advice we're being given is that uh, semi mature trees are around three to five weeks have the best chance of establishing themselves in that location and, and growing properly rather than uh, being put in and dying back or all those other elements. So, um, and, empty bus lanes, are they good? We're just going to have empty bus lanes. Empty bus lanes, again, we're, we're not just building this for now, we're building this for the future. As Andy said, there will be increased bus services uh, going up and down uh, this road and obviously um, as things you know, get more popular, maybe more buses will come forward if, if the, you know, the demand is there to, to put that forward. Um, as Chris has said, a lot more people get moved by the buses, we've got to be able to put that there in place um, to enable people, particularly in the peak times, uh, to make that choice and see there's a benefit by travelling by bus. I appreciate that, yes, there are periods on Milton Road where it, there's a traffic a lot less, but unfortunately when it comes to infrastructure, you've really got to put that in play, with some judgement, in terms of what, what's going in there for enabling people in the peak hours to make that decision to travel by bus rather than travel by uh, their own private vehicles. There. Um, the lady there. So, 
it was just before it gets to the reduced corner. Mm -hmm. So have you put any design work into how you integrate with the reduced corner? Because that junction where it splits the directory is quite complicated and you can easily get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question on the next. Uh, about a year ago, or well, more than two, you put a bus lane near the guided bus lane uh, so that the buses could go down it. And that is what holds up all the traffic at the King's Hedges roundabout. And that's why the queues are so much longer. It's a bus lane, it's never a queue. So, do you want to talk about uh, so, Corner? So, in terms of um, Mitchell's Corner, there's still um, there's friends of Mitchell's Corner, you may be another group, and um, obviously the line development is still going on in terms of Mitchell's Corner. So, we personally haven't tried to predict what the outcomes will be of that at the moment. So there will have to be some element of understanding what it's like to come forward with this corner and then designing that element of the scheme to accommodate that. A lot later than this is, so you'll have to have something. There will be, yeah, but we'll have to have a concept from them which we can accommodate within this before we go into any commitment of works. Um, that is something that will that has to be an interlink between those two projects. In terms of... I mean, we've modelled the existing situation and we've obviously considered that in terms of where we've gone forward um, in terms of the, the new scheme. Um, well, in terms of the new section of the station. Holding teams up. She says that the bus. You only transfer that one. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're driving now. Yeah. The bigger problem there is the light phasing that allows traffic coming out of the science park and the business park yes. that stops the flow of traffic along Milton Road. It's nothing to do with that. Okay, thank you, Ali. Okay, we five minutes. Yeah, we're about five minutes. So there's Four hands. One, two, three, four. So if I take these two first, please. So just here. quickly following on from that previous one, um, yeah, I know you don't care about cars, but why don't you stop the scheme at the busway rather than going to the A14, which is where traffic kind of largely dissipates? The big problems are all around the science park. Yeah, there's a sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, gentlemen. Uh, EMA can um, the last LF, we made a number of points about uh, the lack of modelling around sites. I understand what you can make of that, but the point was made that you can go away and talk to the Dutch and how they do it, so I want to know if that's been done. And that relates to also that we could be asked multiple times, I think I always bring up, which is doing trialling, because we've seen here again this evening, there's a high five in a sort of feeling of doubt around what has prompted, what modelling has prompted and how that all works. And it's a question about building up public trust. And that relates to some of the facts there, which is where the objections and controversy around this scheme originally came to, came from, which is around the removal of the trees. And I think it's crazy that we're going into recommending to go ahead without anyone having any clear idea of what sort of trees are going to be replaced with. So can you try and address the points around when you, when you, when you thought about those points about trialling and so yes, I have met with uh, Royal Biscayne, who are a Dutch company, but they've got offices based in the UK. They actually uh, we sent them the modelling of the Dutch style roundabout that WST did for us for our peer review, which they did. They broadly suggested that the results uh, of the modelling kind of in line with what they would expect. Obviously they they made a few points again that may not sound in the future. So yeah we are we are talking more broadly to, to wider wider variety of consultants. Uh, we also talk I also talk internally with my own cycling team, the cycling team of Cambridge County Council to to assess what they uh, think of what we're doing. And I've had individual meetings with uh, Cam Cycling to, and the Residents Association also to discuss the cycling elements. The modelling that we've done, <coughs> although it does take uh, cycle and pedestrian interactions into account at the junctions, it is not designed to model pedestrian and cycle movements on the route. The modelling is only to give us an indication of actually what happens to the vehicle, the vehicles, the buses, the cars, the lorries on the road. So that gives us an idea of how we need to, to build the junctions. But it doesn't, it doesn't tell us what we need to do with cycle. Uh, so one of the questions whether 
for the levels of cycling that we see on Milton Road, you actually need to model that, or can you design something based on accepted guidance and speaking with you know, the right people who, who understand what needs to be provided for certain levels of cycling? Why, why do you need to model that in this circumstance is the question, because that would incur a lot more expense on the project. And, and also to add to that, when there's any interaction between cyclists and vehicles, those are in the model. So basically, cycling is considered within the modelling, but due to the segregation, as Paul said, um, so, so whenever we get to junctions, when there's all red phases, when there's stop lines, then cycling is considered within that, when there's crossings within the junction environment. But when they're obviously the cycling is segregated, then it's separate from the vehicle carriageway and therefore uh, it doesn't need to necessarily be considered to give a judgment on... on yes, yeah, so sorry, why you come after that is that the impact if you increase the amount of people cycling, you then increasing the number of cars, and that would impact once you make your out how much of road cycling you're going to be But the, the CSRM... Yeah, so the county-wide... County, -wide, <laughs> county sub... Bless you, sir. Uh, the county sub-regional model um, obviously looks at that has a mode choice element um, and so we're using that to guide us in terms of how mode shift will occur and that's still indicating that particular traffic flows will increase on the road even in the future where there will be shifting over to other modes. So, there was the, uh, Why stop at the busway instead of go to the A14? The, there is a scheme that uh, carries on that we're looking at the A10 beyond, so there is a scheme there. The reason it was picked at this, this is coming from the busway into the centre of uh, Cambridge. So that was the reason for picking uh, this particular section. But there is a strategic study being looked at the A10 itself. Unfortunately, you've got to start somewhere, and it was felt that this was a better place to start uh, from the busway down to Mitchum's Corner. And then there was the question about the trees. Why are we talking about trees when we haven't decided what trees are because we're on we're on a concept, and um, if we design everything, we haven't got a concept. You've got a design. We want to talk to you about the trees, um, as to the type of trees. Seriously, does the type of trees affect the uh, the concept? As long as there's an avenue of trees, and we then talk to you about what type of trees. Why what trees? Come on, the trees take up much less space. Well, that's that's why that's well, why we've been working with you. So you can have a much narrower yeah. verges. Yeah. So that's why we've been working with you. And if, if we can save space, that's all part of the design. It's not done over here and totally ignored. It's done as part of the design. If we can save space by putting different types of trees in, but of course that wasn't the comment from earlier. The comment from earlier was we want the cherry trees. So yes, we can put uh, other types of trees in, but it will all be done as part of the design. You've got to do it as part of the design, because if you do it beforehand, then there could be a big argument about, well, you've already predetermined your trees, which then fixes your design. Okay, so there were two... It does affect what well, your concept is. You're saying it doesn't affect it, because you could have an avenue to a narrow section. Okay, it, it, it is a concept, it's not a full design. As part of the full design, we do the trees, so the concept is we have the tree line and there's an issue about whether or not we can get some of that tree line in, in places yeah. and that's the sort of area we need to look at. And that might be the compromise that we put the narrower trees in, we, we put the more conical trees in to actually give us the space to allow it on both sides of the road. So we're not closing it down at all. Okay, um, two more questions on this side. Yeah, the lady there. I think some of the, you know, the 
said to you that we'll provide the service then, I've also said we may also go into something we can't. Which stops Thanks. That's a really great cycling and uh, buses and take more account of cyclists. Yeah, so um, I think I feel that in the, in the way we've progressed the scheme, I think we've been quite clear that we've tried to accommodate all modes. I don't, think, I don't believe it is. Uh, the scheme we've got, the final concept is led just by buses, so I think that's unfair to, to judge that with where we were to where we are now in terms of the scheme. Um, it is a key element, it is part of the key objectives um, to have unimpeded bus movement uh, down Milton Road. Um, and that's what we're trying to balance with obviously a large improvement in the amount of uh, cycle, cycle lanes and segregated cycle lanes along, along the road as well. Um, the cycling team in Cambridge well experienced in, in obviously generate, and we're not led by um, a, a magic number of BCR, but what we need to do is First of all, and that's why it hasn't been done now, is come up with a scheme first of all, and then obviously then assess it against this set of criteria to see what that generates in terms of this benefit loss ratio. So it's not being it's not the tail wagging the dog, it's us coming out with a scheme and then we will be assessed once the board said whether it's happy for the scheme to go ahead or not, as a concept, sorry. Um, and then we'll progress from that part. Um, and obviously it's not just buses that get assessed in terms of, of the benefit. There are a number of elements that assess uh, cycle and walking benefit that are fed in in generating those figures uh, to give us that overall assessment. Um, the other question, Matthew, they're assessed using, if you, if you want to look into the detail of it, if you go on to the Department for Transport website and look up the web tag guidance, and on there it gives you all the details of how these elements in great detail, um, how each of them are assessed. So I would say go and have a look. Um, in terms of it, it gives you all the details and that's used on all major schemes of DFT so it's quite transparent. Um, in terms of Matthew's point, um, as we've tried to say, so modelling is a guide for us, um, but it isn't everything in terms of governing bus lanes. I think uh, what we've shown is that there's a big change from, again, from the original scheme and the do something scheme to what we're proposing now in terms of uh, bus lane lane. Um, what we want to provide in, in terms of final concept is a balance. Uh, between all different modes, um, buses being one of them, as, as, and as Andy said, 10,000 houses coming from Water Beach, uh, North Stoke moving forward, not all those people are going to be able to cycle into the city and a lot of those people want to travel there. So buses are an important element of that and we need to consider that as one of the many modes on this, on this route. Um, and so I think it's balancing that, that allocation of land between them and that's what we've tried to balance as best as possible in this concept. We've shown you, you know, rather than us putting forward something which we then increase the bus lanes later, we're putting forward something we can work with, where we're happy that the level of bus lane being shown is something we can work with and we're happy is still giving up that priority to buses. So you're saying you would reduce the bus lane if it's shown? No, I'll, what I'm saying is there's a concept going forward and we're happy to develop that concept as we go. And we're not making any promises either way in terms of uh, beyond that. So it's a concept that we're taking forward into detailed design and obviously some elements of that may change as part of that process. But we'll work with you on that. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, I've been given a chance just to say thank you very much everybody for coming. Um, as I said at the beginning, I'm Jocelyn Scott, County Councillor for uh, REIC and Chair of the Local Liaison Forum. And we must say thank you very much to the officers for first the presentation, Paul van der Volk, and then responses to the questions, Paul, Chris Tunstall, and Neil Poulton. And then thank you to everybody here for all the questions you've asked. I've religiously written them down. So I've got them all here. And so when we make the, 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 the Milton Road is presented to the assembly and also to the board, I would do undertake to incorporate as much as I can in the feedback to both the assembly and the board in terms of what's been put here. So thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it very much. And look forward to seeing you at the assembly, at the board, and then also at the workshops in the future. Thank you.
So the plans that were presented there tonight um, were nothing new, they've already been published. Um, one thing we did learn though in response to a question I asked was that there's been no safety audit carried out um, as part of this process. So I think that's a really key omission, it's something that I'm going to take to um, the Assembly and Board. I think before they make the decisions on things like the design of um, the roundabout and um, the design of the, the layout of the road in various places, particularly where you've got parking next to cycle lanes, you've got things like the, um, the narrow bus lanes that people are concerned about um, where um, wing mirrors might clip pedestrians or um, cyclists, then all that kind of thing need, really needs to be dealt with um, by a safety audit and the results of that audit, if we're going to spend the money doing it and spend the time doing it, it may as well be put to councillors um, before they take the decision. So um, I'm really hopeful that will take, take place. One of my local councillors, Councillor Martin Smart, said that he was concerned that um, segregating cyclists and pedestrians from motor traffic by trees and verges might actually um, make um, things less safe. He was concerned that when cyclists come up to junctions, if they are um, behind trees, um, then the, the uh, motor traffic turning might hit them, I think was the point he was making. Now, I think that's clearly it's a point to be considered um, in terms of the detailed design. We've got to ensure that the crowns of the trees are lifted, so there's good visibility and there aren't trees in um, just the wrong position before the junctions. But that's again, is the kind of thing which could be caught by a safety audit. So I was pretty concerned to hear Councillor Smart, who introduced himself as the City Council cycling champion, um, speaking against um, segregated, properly segregated cycle paths. But I agree with him on his point, which is that safety needs to be considered and we need to have um, a proper safety audit. On the, the narrowness of the bus lanes, um, so bus lanes are currently 3.6 metres. Um, the proposal is to have them only at, at 3 metres um, at certain places. So and that's a, a seriously a, a serious concern um, which has been raised tonight and which um, uh, the um, Chief Executive of Stage Coast East, Andy Campbell, said that he would really like just a few more centimetres there so that the... Um, wing mirrors of buses don't clip either cyclists or pedestrians on one side or um, lorries um, on the other side because the problem of course would occur when there's a wide vehicle in the traffic lane with um, a bus going next to it. So one thing the officers kept saying throughout this evening's presentation was that the designs are only a concept. I think it's going to be really important that when it goes to the assembly and board that um, councillors there are really clear on if they approve this concept what it is they're approving and what details are left for later consideration there's some discussion of things like bus stops so the details of bus stops are to be discussed later but um, what about other items and um, things like um, the, the trees the types of trees and, and where they're located again that's stuff for later but we need to be really clear on what if anything is fixed now so for example is are, as there are no um, loading bays shown along much of the road, there are some um, shown near the shops, um, but none for um, domestic residential use, does that mean that they've been, um, they've been ruled out from the plans? Uh, and what about the details of how the crossings are going to work and how the lights are going to work? We heard some um, discussions there about how we, there might be the possibility to have some, um, some smart traffic signals um, and even the possibility for traffic signals across the city to be um, intelligently connected so I think we really need to know have a clear list of what if anything is set in stone by this concept um, and, and what's up for later discussion there was some discussion some um, hints that the future discussion will take place at workshop events um, Councillor Scott at the end there said that um, she hopes to see people at those workshops and there were a few hints that they might actually be open to the public this time previously they were just for um, selected um, invited um, groups or, or, or representatives. We don't actually know um, who turned up and who took part. So hopefully we'll get some more transparency through, um, through the rest of this process. But overall, I think it's a great, um, a great thing. We seem to have um, turned this around a little bit from being a bus-centred project to um, a cycle and pedestrian safety-improving um, project, with some exceptions on the roundabout and on the parking as it approaches Mitcham's Corner. And as was pointed out there, they haven't actually dealt with the question of um, connecting Milton Road into Mitcham's Corner, which is clearly one of the, uh, the tricky things, which is um, left outstanding. So it'll be interesting to see um, how that junction is, is considered. Perhaps it'll be considered um, with the remodeling of the Mitcham's Corner area rather than as part of the Milton Road scheme. But as was pointed out, the Milton Road scheme might come first, so there needs to at least be a, a temporary solution um, to things like working out how you can cycle from Milton Road um, across the um, area in the middle of Mitcham's Corner and straight on down um, Victoria Avenue. So anyway, it's a, another step in this process towards remodelling Milton Road.